Hello and welcome to my first tutorial. Um, I'm going to start with AppleScript. So most of the Xcode um, and let me see, let me see if I can, I don't think I can pause this video. So I'm going to talk real quick. I'll, I'll follow up with an explanation. So what is AppleScript? So basically AppleScript is a programming language that Apple developed years ago and allows the user to interface with the system in an automated fashion um, where <clears throat> human intervention is welcomed, required, or not required at all. Um, so there's some basic rules of AppleScript. Uh, we're basically telling the system what we want it to do or we're telling an application what we want it to do. And in this sample here, I'm just going to basically tell the finder to display a dialog box. Uh, it's, it's very, you know, simple code. There's nothing really complex here. Um, I will save the complexity for uh, later on when we get into Xcode projects because um, a lot of the Apple script is not really necessary. Um, a double dash, as I'm noting here, is a comment. Basically, it's just a note for you, a reminder. Um, if you just want to put in a note of what the, what this part of the code is doing, um, those dashes, everything after the double dash is ignored. So it's just a comment. The part that compiles is the actual script. This is the code that the system is going to execute. And those commands are going to be carried out when you run the script. In this case, it just the application finder displays a dialog and it says hello there. So whatever's in quotes is going to be displayed. Um, it can get very complicated um, I'm, or let's just say not complicated but you can make it as complex as you want. So in this case we're going to add another a variable in and a variable can be anything. It can be A, B, C, X, Y, Z just like in algebra um, in this case, I'm using the variable your name. Um, and the value that's stored in that variable can be anything. Um, in this case, if I could spell, uh, if it's going to be SpongeBob. And I'm going to append that. I'm going to add that to the dialog by putting a space. Because you would have a space in the sentence, the word, the, the ampersand, and then the variable um, string, which is your name. So the dialog is result is hello there Spongebob. Um, and you can add to it so we add some exclamation points so then when we run it we get hello there Spongebob with some exclamation points. So it's a very simple process of setting some variables um, if you want and then using those variables however you choose. Here we're doing a simple dialog so we change that variable to a number it is still not a number. It is a um, <clears throat> it is still a string, which means it's just characters. Um, but you can define it as an integer if you're doing complex math, or if you if you go from an integer to a um, a string. So a string. Think of a string as just a series of characters that are not numeric. Um, in this case, it interprets it because of the mathematics that I'm getting ready to code, and it will add those two values together, um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll use a display dialog to give you um, the results. Now, I'm, you know, on purpose, I'm putting in a typo here just to show you what happens when you try to run a script that has some inconsistent code in it. So we're doing the display dialog, um, and we're just going to put the variable in. We just we just want to see the result. We just want to see the number. So we compile the script. It was okay. We run it. It throws an error because that variable that was highlighted is not defined. It looks like it's defined, but it's misspelled. So if you look at the spelling, you will see that it's misspelled. This is the most common failure in coding is just simple mistakes. So with the corrected, it adds these two numbers together and it gives you the correct 
value. Um, so then we can, get, we can preface that with some text. Um, we can do, you know, really whatever we want um, and add the text and then the number. And the answer is um, displayed. So this is just the very basics of an Apple script. It's very simple. It can get very complex depending on what you really want to do and which applications you want to control. Each application has its own set of rules. Uh, some are common across all applications, which is called a standard dictionary. Um, some applications have unique uh, dictionary properties, different commands that you can use for those applications. And um, uh, I had a window there that jumped in my way. Let me get that out of the way. Um, anytime you on a Mac, when you try to create a new document and you go to close it, it's going to prompt you to save. This one we're not going to save. It's uh, it's really of no use other than demonstration. But um, I will get into some more advanced Apple scripts um, here shortly. Uh, let's see if I can find one real quick that's a little bit more um, a little bit more advanced. Uh, let me see. Be patient. <clears throat> Got a lot of data here. So this is basically, you know, how to create a list and pick, choose from that list. So you want to, we got something in the list. We want to choose from the list. Tell the application to, to tell the finder to let us choose from the list and store that in a variable. And um, then we're going to um, set the result of that choice um, inside of another variable and display a dialog with the result. So in that case, in this case we chose Eric and that's the that's the result that was displayed in the dialog. If we run it again, we choose a different value. Um, that's the dialog. Kevin. So um, lists are very useful um, if they're if they're constant. Um, if they're changing, there's a, if, if they're constantly changing, there's a different way to create those lists or those arrays. But um, this is just a simple example of choosing from a list. Um, I wrote an app recently where I had to pick from one of the four U.S. time zones, and then set use the system um, to set the time zone on the computer, so the user was able to just pick from a drop-down list: Eastern, Central, Mountain, or Pacific. And it automatically adjusted in the system preferences the time zone and changed the time um, immediately. So syntax is everything, as you can see there. Uh, if you if you get the syntax wrong, it's going to throw an error, and it it'll tell you that it you know what it expects to see, but what it actually found. Um, so the Apple Script Editor, which is found in the uh, applications folder in the utilities folder it is a uh, script editor Apple's changed the name of that over the years but um, um, you can do a search or just open that utilities folder in your applications folder and open the script editor um, you can do a web search for you know Apple scripts and it'll probably find lots of examples of simple Apple scripts or uh, tutorials in, on YouTube of, of how to write Apple scripts. Uh, I'm not going to get into a whole lot of that. I will give you some basics and then as I do some Xcode examples I will explain what my Apple script is actually doing. So um, the syntax is, is critical. Um, the application is pretty forgiving. Um, one thing that I didn't cover in this is um, this application can be saved as a script, which will open in script editor, or it can be saved as an application, which will run just like a regular Mac application. Um, it can also be saved as a droplet, but I'll get into that. We won't really get into that at all, uh, because that has nothing to do with Xcode and it's not useful in that environment. So this will be step one. is just an introduction to what is Apple Script and what what exactly does it do? And really what it does is anything you want it to do depending on how much time and energy you want to invest in writing that code. 
So this ends the first AppleScript tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, leave comments, subscribe to the channel, and um, I will continue with a few more AppleScript examples before jumping into Xcode. Thanks for joining.